here is our wonderful, beautiful planet Earth. It's witnessed some phenomenal changes over the last few hundred years, and most strikingly, one species, us, Homo sapiens, have come to master the laws of nature and to so dominate the planet and other species and to send ourselves into space that we can take wonderful photos like this. But we've used that mastery of nature to also elevate ourselves above a poverty-stricken life uh, into a civilization where hundreds of millions and indeed billions of people now have access to huge material wealth and resources and prosperity. And how did we do it? Well, we harnessed millions of years of solar energy stored up in coal, oil and gas, and we used that energy, we combined it with natural resources, timber, steel, etc., to build buildings, schools, hospitals, roads, infrastructure, and to build on our human capital and to become wealthy. It's a phenomenal achievement. But the question is, is this model running out of time? Is it sustainable? And are we running out of stuff? And my answer is, we're not running out of stuff. Here's some copper, copper wire. If copper becomes more scarce, the price rises. And when the price rises, we have an incentive to go and find more of it or to switch to fiber optic. And after switching to fiber optic, we may well discover that it's actually more productive, more, more useful than the copper in the first place. What we're not running out of is fossil fuels. So the little blue circle is, this is to scale, is the amount of carbon dioxide emissions the atmosphere can take before we get over two degrees. The big black circle is the amount of carbon dioxide we have embodied in easily accessible fossil fuels in the Earth's crust. There is too much of the stuff and we need a solution. And it needs to be a multilateral solution. This is a sculpture from Beijing. It's called Politicians Discussing Global Warming. And this is in some ways precisely what we don't need to be drowning under the weight of failed multilateral negotiations. We do need uh, a new set of solutions and a, a new stimulus to solve our collective challenges. And we can learn from nature there. This crocodile needs his teeth cleaned. The bird needs lunch. They have a shared interest, they can work together, they've identified that interest, and they can collaborate. We can learn different lessons, not necessarily just this one, but other lessons from nature about how we can collaborate with one another based on our own self-interest, that's an honest assessment of that fact. And nature gives us the resources that we need to solve climate change. The sun provides us with more than enough energy to run our entire global economic civilization. In fact, it provides us with more than enough energy in a month, less than a month, in fact, less than a week, in fact, less than a day, in fact, it's about an hour of sunlight will give us enough energy to run our civilization for a year. And this unattractive lump of rock, it's called a perovskite, even it contains ingenious ideas. Researchers at the Oxford Martin School have deployed the perovskite structure in the rock to create a highly conductive, very efficient, very cheap solar cell. And it's innovations like that one that have led to the cost of solar photovoltaic cells plummeting over the last few years and such that we're now at the point where solar is in some places cheaper than fossil fuels and one hopes will be cheaper than fossil fuels across the world before too long. So nature provides us with many ingenious answers. Anaerobic digestion, the conversion of uh, biomatter into energy is also a process that could have a great um, potential to solve climate change. The best engineers and scientists around the world have phenomenally eff efficient and effective anaerobic digestion systems. But Daisy here, our friendly cow, is 20 times more efficient. How does she do it? Well, we don't know. But we are wor working with Daisy at the Oxford Martin School to find out. And when we do find out, this is a multi-trillion RMB or US dollar problem. We need that amount of capital, but also the people who can harness nature understand biomimicry, understand nature's toolkit and use it will solve the problem and deliver vast value and prosperity to themselves and to the planet. And it means working with the grain of human nature. That's the other part of it. This is a Tesla. I enjoyed being in one last week. It's a very sexy, uh, enjoyable car to be in. It's also zero emissions. So working not with the hair shirts but with the grain of human desire is what will lead us towards solutions. And the other insight that nature gives us is that ecosystem logic needs to be harnessed. Our industrial and our political, political ne ecosystems need to shift. This parrotfish is at the key of a coral ecosystem. It's understanding these keystone species within our political ecosystems, the sensitive points where we can really deliver change. That's the, the focus of study of economists at the Oxford Martin School. So my pitch to you 
is to join me to understand how we can learn from nature, as this beautiful little boy is, it's not me, uh, <laughs> Ian, uh, to, to, to prevent climate change and to harness nature's technologies. Thank you.